We continue our focus on Apple with two money managers who own the stock. Stephen Lieb is the president of Lieb Capital Management, which has owned Apple shares since early 2008 when the price was a little more than a third of what it is today. Michael Borgen is a senior portfolio manager at Navalier and Associates, whose large cap growth fund holds about 150,000 Apple shares, accounting for about 2.2 percent of that portfolio. Gentlemen, uh, great to have you here with Matt and myself. Steve, let's kick it off with you. So you got the news over the weekend about Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. Does it fundamentally change your view about the outlook for Apple long term? Long term, past three to four years, yes. If something did happen to Steve Jobs and he could not, he, he lost that visionary role that he had in the company because he became in, incapacitated, yes, I definitely think it has an effect on Apple. I think of all the executives, and I'm including Warren Buffett in this, mm -hmm. Steve Jobs is probably the single most important to his company. It's been his vision which has taken this stock from a near bankrupt company, I think 12, 13, 14 years ago, to what is now the largest tech company in this country and the second largest co uh, company in the United States overall. Michael, what do you think? I mean, uh, is Apple still worth $300 billion if Steve Jobs is no longer creating new products there? Well, I think uh, in the short term, uh, they don't have any problems with their, their product cycle right now. And I think uh, their, their pipeline is stacked pretty, uh, pretty deep. So in the short term, say out three to five years, we're still very comfortable holding Apple stock. Uh, further than that, he's, uh, we absolutely believe uh, that uh, Apple does have an issue with finding another visionary if, in fact, Steve Jobs does become in, uh, incapacitated. So he, no doubt about it, you guys, in, in your view, that he is the one who sets the tone for the company. I know a lot of folks say that, but there's obviously a lot of other individuals who go into actually implementing it and ensuring the success of each of these different products. I mean, Michael, nonetheless, you have no doubt about it. When it comes to anything creative and visionary, it's all about Steve Jobs. No doubt about it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's it. He is the visionary at Apple. However, there are also a lot of very creative and talented people at Apple. Uh, on top of that, you have one of the best operators running the company that you could find right now, Tim Cook. He had done a phenomenal job. And I think investors who, who really discounted when uh, Steve Jobs left last time really missed out on over 60% gain when uh, Tim Cook had the reins. Is there anybody, uh, Steve, who who can do what Steve Jobs does. I mean, he's got a pretty full bench. You know, he's got a guy there in charge of product design. He's got a guy in charge of marketing, which has been fantastic, the design and the marketing, mm -hmm. a guy in charge of retail sales. People if you've been to an to Apple Street, store, it's been yeah. amazing. Uh, he's got a guy who navigates sort of Hollywood and record labels for him. I mean, he seems to have one guy for each thing that does that perfectly, but is there anyone who can do it all? Well, I think the person that probably selected those one guys for all those things was probably Tim Cook. As far as Steve Jobs himself goes, I mean, I don't want to make too much of him, but he is a remarkable guy. And it's sort of like saying, well, if Rembrandt, you know, became incapacitated, are there other people that can still paint like Rembrandt? And of course there were. Rembrandt had a number of students, but no one was Rembrandt. There was one Rembrandt. Same thing with Bach, etc. I mean, Steve Jobs is really the creative pinnacle I think of modern capitalism. I mean, he, his ideas, I mean, right now, Mac is a very viable threat to Windows and uh, um, Intel, that, 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 that combination. No one would have believed that is possible. But this bundling of products, iPad, iPhone, iPod with uh, the Mac, has made the Mac a real competitor. Now Jamie Dimon comes in, you were talking about JP Morgan before, he sees everybody with an iPhone and an iPad. And he said, well, my goodness, these people should be able to talk to their computer at their, you know, at home. And, you know, we want to get a Mac in the office. I mean, this was Jobs' vision, and it's extraordinary. Michael, let me, you know, a lot of people have described Steve Jobs as an editor-in-chief, and that makes sense. He sort of sits at the top and decides uh, what needs to be cut out of the article or the product and what needs desperately to be included. Um, you'd think it wouldn't be too difficult to find. I mean, there are a plethora of geniuses running around uh, Silicon Valley, right? I mean, how hard is it to replace this guy? It, it's exceedingly difficult, and you're are, you're absolutely correct. There are uh, there are a plethora of geniuses running around Silicon Valley, <laughs> and yet there's still only one Steve Jobs. Well, I guess that says it, right? 
I guess so. It, it still stuns <laughs> me that the company's worth $313 billion. And obviously, it's, you guys are both going to say, yeah, it's definitely worth that because you hold the stock. But, I mean, it's worth more than 75% of Exxon. And these guys make, you know, phones, computer tablets. Does that make any sense to you? It, if you had asked me that question five years ago, I probably, to be very honest, would say, no, it can't be done. But, you know, as I was saying, it took a Jobs to say iPhones can somehow be connected to your computer at your office. And that is remarkable. He had the best iPhone in the business, and that led to, you know, these amazing market share gains that you're still seeing by Mac. And one last statistic, Mac right now only represents 10% of the PC market, maybe 12%. Tremendous amount more room for growth. Listen, you gentlemen, I know are going to come back to us as soon as the uh, company reports earnings because we are looking for Apple earnings around 4.30 New York Times. So we're talking with Steve Lieb of Lieb Capital Management, Michael Borgen over at Navalier & Associates. Both of them will be joining us again once Apple reports its numbers. All right.